throw it away here or take it home to cost. This is a classic swimsuit edition. El McPherson in our prime. Yeah. If it were mint, I'd throw you five bucks, but this is, uh, let's just say, well loved. <laughs> And welcome to Kelly, where we talk about life, your life and my life. And through Kelly, we hope to inspire. I have Matt Berlenke on the show today, and he is an actor. Uh, you have been on shows all the way back from the 90s, All My Children, and your, um, your, is your wife on the show? My love interest. Your love interest was. We were young. We yes. were young. We were playing. I mean, we were like the 902 cast. We were playing a little older playing 17 and okay okay and yeah, yeah it was a lot of fun kelly ripa kelly ripa yeah uh, yeah the dynamo do you still have any type of relationship with her i mean when i see when i see her you know it's a hug and a hello and whatnot uh i actually went to her um when she got her star on the hollywood walk of fame i was invited by one of the, by variety magazine and you know that that was cool to see yeah, them that's I mean, so look cool. at her now she has her whole life and career thanks to me. Of course. I was no, about to she, say that. She does. She does. <laughs> because I was young, dumb, and full of blah. Uh -huh. And I quit the show after a couple of years being on it at the height of our popularity. Wow. Because I just... I. I couldn't take saying I love you to her 90 times a day anymore. You know, I wanted to go... Uh, have you fun. Have other love interest. <laughs> yeah, I wanted I wanted to go laugh and have fun. Right. I wanted to do sitcoms. Yeah, and listen, that, it was you know, more the genre, right? I made some doozy mistakes uh -huh. as an actor, and I'll I'll touch on those. But like one of them, I mean, and not really over the long term because mm -hmm. everything you know, everything all cause and effect. Right. I don't have my three beautiful kids in all likelihood. Uh huh. Uh, beautiful, well, beautiful. I know I don't. I yeah. don't have them if I don't quit that show. But right. they were they were offering to make me a millionaire to stay. Wow. And I was like, nah, nah, nah. I'm just gonna go back to L.A. and you know ride my Harley and be on sitcoms. Uh huh. Um, and then one of the next uh, mistake uh, was I had the big meeting at Fox with the with the heads of talent, and I was there. 13 seconds after hello when they said so you want to be the new guy on Beverly Hills 90210 or Melrose Place now if I had an agent or manager next to me he or she would have said is that an offer right I was just too honest and I always have been I said yeah, you know I just came off of a soap I really just want to have fun and laugh all day on a sitcom. Right. And, you know, they did create a sitcom, a role for me on a sitcom. Uh, but I saw these guys uh, maybe three weeks later, and I said, you know, just out of curiosity, when you asked me about 90210 or Melrose Place, was that an offer? They were like, duh, yes. Wow, look You had your that. choice, look you know. Look at that. So, uh, you know, to all those up-and-coming actors out there, Think, think, think before you speak. <laughs> Long term, I don't have regrets because I have my kids, I have my family, but uh, think. Yeah, you know. because when you're young, you just don't really realize, <clears throat> you know, something like 90210, that's, that, that's huge. So you don't realize. Yeah. But you never know. You never I mean, know. Listen, life is life and you live it. That's right. That's right. So some other shows that you've done? Uh, Jeff Foxworthy show. Okay. He's an Atlanta native. Yes. Uh, Jeff and I would sit around on set all day you know, during rehearsals and breaks singing Bob Seger. Turn the page because, you know, Turn the Page is the best Bob Seger yes, song out there. Yes, yes. Um, not a terrible voice for, you know, really? someone who sounds like he does when, when he's doing his comedy act. Uh-huh. Um, Police Academy, the series, was based on the movies, and I played the lead character, like the Steve Gutenberg role, and that was uh, 26 episodes in Vancouver, wow. but I wanted to go back to L.A. I was, are know, are uh, working on a series, like that can get daunting, right? It can be when you're on location like that. Uh -huh. you know, in Vancouver, you're not protected by SAG or your, your own union. Um, 
working 16, 18 hour days and, right. you know, it, it was a grind, but again, that was another one of those where I wanted off the show uh -huh. and maybe it would have been smart to not do that, but you know, yeah. who knows? Yeah. Again, it all comes down to every decision I've ever made led somewhere else led to yes led to your guys. kids okay yeah. so now we're we're uh 2019 and we're going to talk about cobra kai cobra kai uh, tell me a little yeah. tell me a little bit more about cobra kai we had a, a little uh, a boy that that was on cobra kai but give me a little more of the history and the story of cobra kai well it's it's a uh, 30 odd years after the last karate kid mm -hmm. not the remake karate kid but you know the original series of karate kid movies it's 30 years later where are johnny and daniel okay and it was really clever of william zabka billy and uh ralph macchio to to come up with this concept of now daniel larusso is a very successful car dealership owner and johnny is out uh down and out and you know, always drunk and trying to figure out how to pay the bills and how to get his car started and, <laughs> you know, get to the dojo and, you know, just trying to, trying to teach kids, you know, the, the way of the fist. Right, the right. Kai. Um, and in building the world around the dojo, the, the filmmakers realized that they, they had to have, you know, establishments and characters that they could go back to every once in a while to, to make Johnny's life and world richer. Right. And uh, I, they, they decided to have a pawn shop there. And, you know, when I got the audition for the pawn shop guy, Lyle, in my mind was something completely different. And I know it was in everyone else's mind too, but uh -huh. you know, somehow I got an audition. And, you know, I, I teach acting, particularly audition okay. technique. and. One of the things that's most important is how, what's, what's going to set you apart. Even if you're completely wrong mm -hmm. for, for the part, the way it's written, what's going to set you apart? Is it the attitude? Is it, you know, the, the, the way you stress words or whatnot? It's always something that 99% of people like see exclamation points. They're showing how awesome and dramatic they are yes. and saying, oh, God damn it. Yes, yes, you know? yes. Whereas what if you just say god damn it right right you know yeah yeah you, it's, it's the subtext it's, it's what's the intention of the words yeah it, i mean exact same mm -hmm. you, you got the exact same message from me mm -hmm. without me showing that you know i can be brando calling for stella right right you know so um it it left a mark enough that obviously i got the role and you know i show up in season one and I show up now again in season two where they have this running thing now between my character and, and Johnny, Billy Zabka. And the greatest compliment paid that, I mean, it really made me feel good is when I went back to shoot on season two and I'm sitting around all the, you know, video village mm -hmm. where, you the know, all the producers village. are watching <laughs> everything. And I'm sitting kind of, you know, 20 feet behind just watching and uh you know they started to get up to move to m the area where we we're going to be filming my scenes and they looked over and they came over and they were just like hey man welcome back, back let's just tell you this we've been laughing for three months thinking about how you're going to say these lines wow and because they loved your I'm, audition the, from the audition to you know what i did on set the year before uh -huh. to now, to have them say, you know what, we've been laughing for three months just imagining how you're going to say this. But look, that's what you wanted to do, right? Because you wanted to do that, sitcoms, that you wanted to do the, things to make people laugh. But that was the biggest compliment, yes. you know, that, that I made enough of a mark that not only to earn my way back to season two, yeah. but for them to even think that, you know, just writing and laughing, saying, oh, he's can't wait for this yeah you know? yeah so, yeah so that was really cool and now you know now i gotta just kind of lobby to get myself into the dojo yeah. with johnny because we have this contentious relationship uh where i just in fact i on camera call him a putz uh -huh, you know uh, -huh. uh and i'm working with the producer to get me into the dojo and 
you know, let us just duke it out. You right. Know, because, or even better, let them work off, uh, you know, debt to me at the pawn shop by giving me free lessons because that means more screen time. Yes, <laughs> yes. Are you going in, uh, what's the difference in, you think, uh, the way you were as a young actor and where you're at now? Are you going in and just having fun or Yeah, what? I mean, let's face it. Uh, uh, during the All My Children days, you know, I'm, I'm early 20s and I'm thinking, you know, I gotta be Brando, I gotta be Method, I gotta, I gotta hurt, and you know. And my soap opera. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, I always, even then I went against the writing, you know, um, and, and felt like I had to be, take everything so seriously. Right. Now, you know, granted, I mean, there's a time and place in drama, like I just did a TV movie called the Bobby DeBarge story, which filmed here. Okay. And I play the DeBarge family, you know, they, they were kind of like the poor man's version of the Jackson family. Uh, but it's all set in the 70s and 80s with uh, Barry Gordy and Motown Records and when uh, Bobby DeBarge was coming up. And I play their manager. And that's a dramatic movie. I mean, it's it's not a feel good story, right. you know, Bobby DeBarge. I'm, it's not a secret, he's dead, right. you know, and it's actions in his life that led up to that. And, you know, as his manager in this movie, I feel some of that pain, yeah, it's you heavy. know? So there's a time and place for that, but, you know, t between scenes, you know, I'm not sitting there like this. Right, right, right. You know, I'm sitting there. You <laughs> You're know. not stuck in your depressed character. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. popping, you know, mints up in the air and catching them, <laughs> right. you know, or seeing if I can catch a cigarette <laughs> on the toss, you know. So you've been here in Atlanta, and we're going to have to wrap up, but you've been here in Atlanta for a year? Uh, I moved out here at the end of 17, and uh, it's fantastic. I wanted my kids to be around trees and yeah. not L.A., and... Uh, you know, I, I teach acting out here. Um, you have your own studio or are you doing out of your house? I work with a, with a studio out of L.A. called Gray Studios. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I also I do self-taping and, mm -hmm. and coaching out of my house up in Marietta. Okay. Um, and I actually uh, have a, a pilot script in development about the ATF that, uh, you know, I want Georgia needs homegrown projects Absolutely. and now as a resident you know i want to represent my state mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh it's the only script that's ever been approved by the atf and i spent a long time working with the atf to uh research it and everything it's an adaptation of a book about uh my friend now great guy who spent 30 years working undercover in the atf and it's it's pretty it's pretty hairy and it's wow. very diverse casting a lot of latino roles uh -huh. Um, and a lot of roles for Atlanta locals or Georgia locals. Right. You know, so I want to, I yeah. I'm still getting to know people here. Right, so right. I need to meet the film commission. Yeah. You know, I need to show them, you know, a show I executive produced about the Vegas coroner's office to show that, look, I, I'm not just an actor out here. I know what I'm doing behind the camera yes. too. Yes. So, uh, uh, but in the meantime, you know, also listen, what was that guy's name? Jeffrey Owen? The guy who got job shamed and then Tyler Perry. Right, right. You know, reached out and he's on a right. show now or whatever. I mean, what younger actors need to know is that unless you're Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie, you know, and I'm none of those people, uh -huh. you're going to have to be prepared for a tough life, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I work in the home improvement field here too. You mm -hmm. know, I can't just be an actor. You right. Know? And uh, you know, Tyler Perry, you're welcome to reach out to yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah. Because the weird thing is, when I'm sitting in people's homes, or you know, they open the door or whatever, and I'm there to talk about their window replacement or roof replacement, you know, I see it in their eyes sometimes. Not mm -hmm. all the times, because like, you know, I can you? I can walk I've down the street you. undetected. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, wait. I know you. Uh huh. Uh huh. You you're on the stories so or something like uh -huh. that. Don't you act anymore? That's a damn shame. What are you doing selling home improvements and everything? I'm like, 
I, I still act. I, I, still... I didn't quit acting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, but I have three kids, a yeah. wife, a dog. Well, what most people don't understand, and we really have to wrap up, is yeah. that, you know, you go on, let's say you got on a, a feature film and you had, like, a decent role. You're getting a certain amount of money for that year, but you might not get anything for another year, another two years. So That's so it thing. can be a big bulk at one time, but you, it's not going to sustain for a long period of time unless you're getting those over and over and over and that's over. the truth ruth that's the you truth I mean? ruth had, we know it we know it six <laughs> series in a row you know yeah. and, and you get used to a certain income yeah uh but he, you know even if you do a guest spot out here you get a few grand right and then you're like wait when's the next guest spot yes so, uh yeah it's tough. tyler perry come on i do get job shame <laughs> in a certain in a certain manner so here I am. He needs you. He needs you. You need me. <laughs> All right. There's some, uh, I, that's for you to remind you that you're a gift in life. Booyah. And you pretty much already gave uh, an actor advice. Um, let's do on tapings. What advice would you give them about tapings? And you, you literally have five seconds. Do it. Be real. <laughs> be you. Uh, just be original. And I'll help you get there. Yeah. Uh, authentic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're looking, they're looking for someone to bring this alive. And... You know, they want you to be great. They don't want to fast forward through your audition. So just make good choices and be authentic. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, we hope that this segment inspired and educated you.